Hi there, business owners, directors, and marketeers. In today's show, I'm meeting Tom Hassan from Nine Lenses. I'm Lucas, your host as always, and I want to tell you just a little bit about Tom before we quickly introduce um, himself and, and jump into the questions. So he is an executive um, who is passionate about growing emerging software and technology companies. He's uh, stepped in as a CEO for Nine Lenses, and he has collected quite a unique um, experience set as a technology consultant, software entrepreneur, and MBA uh, all together provided him the capabilities and the skills um, to basically quickly understand businesses and grow them as he's doing today with Nine Lenses. Um, we want to learn uh, a bit more about Nine Lenses. It's basically a platform that says that they make um, assessments easy, uh, digital, and data driven. And we want to learn all about that. So, Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lucas. Pleasure to be here. Cool. So tell us about Nine Lenses, what it is all about. Sure. So Nine Lenses, we are a U.S.-based company. We help sales and marketing executives build assessments that they use to engage their prospects and their buyers. And one of the things that they're seeing, again, depending on marketing, we know content marketing has been around for a long time. That game has been changing quite a bit as buyers are looking for more personalized experiences. They're looking for... Um, more analysis and insights as they're buying online. And so our marketers are taking their content, which is historically static, right? It could be a PDF, it could be a white paper, it could be a video, and creating interactive assessments for their buyers to come in, answer 10, 15, 20 questions about how well they're doing in certain areas and getting an instant scorecard with insights, recommendations, maybe a comparison to a benchmark so that that is you know, very personalized value to the, the buyer or the prospect on the website. And so um, there's a lot of value downstream for marketers and sales, but it really starts by just giving a really great personalized experience to buyers um, that are looking to, you know, solve particular problems. Really, really cool. So am I sort of completely off track here if I'm saying something like, you know, a page speed index tool or an SEO um, sort of ranking tool, but now I can apply this for every use case that I have and give that to my visitors? That's right. So it's every, you know, every piece of content that you could be thinking about. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people write research or white papers, the top 10 things you should be doing or not be doing. Um, but as, you, as a reader, you're always trying to evaluate, well, I'm doing well in this area. I'm not doing well. I'm going to skip over that one. That one doesn't apply. And so really what they're trying to do is translate that content to them personally in their business. And so an assessment is really just a fast track way, an interactive, more fun experience to just answer some questions and have the company tell me how well I'm doing, right? give me analysis, give me recommendations, and I can do that all without having to talk to anyone. And so um, it, it's, a, it's a better personalized experience uh, to get more from the companies I'm investigating um, before having to talk to someone. Really, really interesting. So who would be the people that we be typically using the platforms? Who would be the champions within the, within the companies um, you know, to start using Nine Lenses? Uh, yeah, and what types of companies would be using it primarily? Yeah, so we see uh, B2B companies, first and foremost, that has a, a, you know, a, a, a complex sale. It could be software, it could be services, um, but it's got a relatively, um, I would say, higher a average sales price, so maybe $10,000 and above, these sorts of companies selling these more complex offerings. Mm -hmm. And there's oftentimes education, right? You have to explain to the customer what the problem is, what's happening in the market. Uh, that's why you're writing content, right? You're building points of view, you're building thought leadership. And so we're just enabling our, our clients to take that static content and make it interactive and personalized instead of having to ask them to read five, 10 pages of material that they typically never do anyway. Um, they're just now able to answer some questions and have answers told to me about what I should do, what I shouldn't be doing, right? So it's just a lot faster, more fun, more personalized experience. So we're selling predominantly to marketers and to sales teams. And so marketers are building assessments. They're using them on the website, email campaigns, um, you know, on LinkedIn, social, all these different places where content is traditionally published and promoted. This is a way to capture and engage buyers that are already kind of in their universe. Makes, makes a lot of sense. I would be curious then, since you mentioned the salespeople as well as the marketeers, sort of from their different perspectives, starting to use Nine Lenses, how would those, how would your clients actually, you know, finding you, what would be a typical user journey that they would go through, through which type of channels in order to sort of discover and start using Nine Lenses? 
So we're, you know, so how does a marketer find nine lenses? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so we're, we are like traditional SaaS companies. We have both inbound and outbound, um, you know, efforts in marketing. So we're trying to target our ideal customer profile with sales development reps, you know, calling, setting appointments for our account executives, as well as our inbound strategy, which again is content. You know, we have assessments on our own website, uh, helping um, our buyers come to see whether or not an assessment would be effective for their, um, their use case, their, their business, their, their marketing efforts. So, you know, I would say traditional SaaS, inbound and outbound for Very our cool. uh, marketing. Very cool. I'm on the website here checking out uh, the, the past to the assessment. Very, very cool that you can utilize it immediately on your own website. Very awesome. Um, you mentioned the website there and the assessments on the website. What purpose does the website play or what role does the website play for, for your business? Uh, how, how would you describe that? So, it's, it, it, you know, it's fundamentally important because that's where most people find us, right? That's, I think, just every company out there today, oftentimes people start by looking on the web. So having a, a, a great online presence, having a, a lot of resources available to people coming to look and learn. Um, so we invest a lot of time and effort into our, our web, our web presence, our website, um, you know, different channels like social, um, you know, so we're investing in each of those areas to, to, you know, have people come find us, but ultimately brings them back to our website. So it's always critically important asset for us makes total sense i'm checking here the out the website while we're speaking i actually see that you're having um a demo there that somebody can request and um, as well as you can see the assessment which in a way is a little bit of a you know sneak preview as well um, i had conversations with um SaaS founders recently a lot about you know a free trial versus you know requesting a demo on the website what's your thinking around that how did you come to the conclusion to say okay we're putting up a demo there um maybe we can we can learn a little bit about that yeah, so the demo is um, really just the way for us to engage with anyone. It doesn't have to be a demo. It's usually a first conversation. Um, you know, we can, you know, the, the assessment on our website is a demo, right? They're able to answer some questions. They get an immediate scorecard. So they can kind of get an, a, a feel for an assessment. Um, what they don't know is when they complete that assessment, our, you know, our kind of the marketing side is triggered where our sales team is notified that people are taking assessments, how often they're viewing their, their, their scorecards, et cetera. Um, but we're giving different people uh, ways to engage with us, whether it's just viewing the, the assessment online or requesting a demo um, to formally request a conversation. That's how I think of a demo. We're not really pulling up our software, giving them a click by click. Uh, it's too early in our sales process to do that. Makes a lot of sense. I think it's a very good tip actually for everybody who's listening, um, the marketeers that are building up the side as well as even, you know, founders of, of other founders and CEOs of other SaaS companies. I think it's a really good advice um, that you're giving, giving there to probably not pull up the whole tool uh, way too early. So um, I would be curious to, um, on the website, since we're talking a bit about the website here before we're moving into learning a bit about yourself, talking about the website, what usually comes up in the conversation is, you know, qualification on the website and, and conversions. How do you think about qualifying um, visitors to your website? Is there anything that you do in particular, anything that you've been, been trying to do? Yeah, so this has evolved, right? We over, over the past few years, we've had traditional MQL scoring, right? So based on the pages that they visit, the actions that they take, if they um, you know, download one of our white papers or, or pieces of content, like the scores go up. And so we've, you know, when people hit a certain threshold, they become an MQL and that then gets passed over to sales. But we aren't any really different than the industry as it relates to getting those MQLs to convert or want to have a conversation with sales is really, really difficult. And um, this is why I think assessments is such an important piece for marketers going forward is because um, when someone takes an assessment, they're very interested, they're curious, and you know that they spent five minutes answering 10, 10, 15 questions and they got some automated recommendations. And so you now know that they're very engaged and now the sales rep or the, the sales development rep, the person in marketing that's going to follow up with that lead can now say, hey Lucas, I see you took this assessment, you've got two automated recommendations, I have two more recommendations I wanna share with you, can we schedule some time for me to share that with you? 
And so all of a sudden, I've been able to personalize uh, my outreach, and now the that sales rep or that marketer is able to add value in that conversation because I know where your pain points are. I know where you're struggling. I know where you're doing well. Um, so it now helps that conversion of someone wanting to talk to sales go way up because now the sales rep can add value. Whereas conversely, if you download a white paper, you click a bunch of stuff on the website and now I get an MQL, I have no idea what you're trying to do, Lucas. I, I can see kind of what you're clicked around, um, but you've never said you want to talk to me. And when I follow up, a traditional email says, hey, Lucas, I saw you, you know, downloaded this white paper or you watched these videos. Can we schedule some time? I want to talk to you. And more often than not, nobody responds to that inquiry because they don't view the sales rep as being able to add value. Um, and it comes across in the emails. And that's why conversion rates um, are, are so low. Makes a lot of sense. You're basically utilizing then nine lenses in itself in order to increase the qualification flow for your own business. I think that's really, really cool. <clears throat> yeah, and that's the same play. I mean, we're using, you know, we eat our own dog food. You know, you probably know that saying. Um, so we're helping our clients get better conversions. And it's all through being able to tailor your uh, insights and analysis to those people. And that's why they're willing to talk. Very good. Very good. Anything that you've been or how are you thinking about just purely conversion rate in itself? I understand that assessments help to, you know, increase the um the quality of a lead by the, the steps that are going through in terms of the actual number conversion rate, maybe the number of, of uh, demos that are being requested, anything that you learned, maybe any war stories to share, um, how you were able to increase that or on whether that has been sort of something you looked into. Well, I, again, I just kind of go back to just using our own. Um, I mean, we used to just have a demo button. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm sorry, request a demo. That was mm -hmm. our only call to action. Mm -hmm. And so um, again, that's probably the most ready someone can be because they're actively requesting to talk to sales. Um, so by us putting web, you know, assessments on our own site, it's given them another channel to engage. So we're able to kind of get formal meetings, just like a requested demo without having them to consciously say, I want to talk to sales. So we're getting more demo requests or more conversations with sales, if you want to think of it that way, uh, as a result of using both the requested demo button as well as just take an assessment. Makes, so total, yeah. makes total sense. Thanks a lot for sort of putting that a little bit into perspective. I would like to switch gears a little bit and learn about you as a sort of leader and CEO of the company a little bit. Maybe um, you could describe us, how would you formulate, you know, your own goal, maybe, you know, for the next quarter, the next year, like what is it sort of that you as a CEO are striving towards? Too? Well, I think it always starts with growth and, um, you know, because we have to be a growing business. I mean, every company that's not growing is, is dying, really. Mm -hmm. And so it's formulating a growth path. And that starts with who, who are, who's our customer, what's our value prop to that customer, and organizing around the sales, marketing, and delivery of that customer. And so we have to think about, you know, how many conversations do we need? How many meetings do we have to have? How many opportunities we need to create, right? So traditional marketing and sales um, pipeline. And I think at this stage of, you know, we're 25 people um, and it's, it's, it's really all about growth and um, not growth at all costs, you know, because we know that if you bring in the wrong customer, they're going to churn, but it's really trying to attract the right customer, invest in them, and then see that relationship grow. Um, so we're, we're not a volume play at this point in terms of trying to acquire thousands of customers, but really trying to find the right companies that buy into using assessments and seeing those relationships grow because it's, it's a lot easier to grow accounts than it is to acquire them. Got you. So you're measuring yourself even alongside sort of like the meetings, the conversations that are being set up, sort of like a team goal, I should imagine it like yes, this? Or? Yes, we have... We have um, sales goals each month, each quarter, and then we convert that back into how many meetings do we need to have, how many leads do we have to translate into those meetings. Uh, so yeah, we, we're, we're tracking that every day, how many um, meetings, how much pipeline we're creating uh, to make sure that we're doing the right things that will lead to the outcomes that we're, you know, in our goals. Makes a lot of sense. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. I think it's going to be very interesting for guys to, who are sort of building up their structure to, to, to learn about that. Um, what type of content do you consume personally? Like sort of, you know, where do you go in order to learn, you know, to become a better leader, better CEO? Where do you upskill yourself? 
yeah, there's a variety of channels. I'm part of a CEO group here in the Washington DC area, which is made up of, you know, a lot of technology CEOs, but also non tech CEOs. So, mm-hmm. uh, and they bring in a lot of more seasoned CEOs that have done it two, three, four times. So I'm always just trying to learn from people that have been in my seat for longer and had uh, lots of success. And that always makes me expand my thinking. Um, so it's just kind of expanding my CEO skill set. But then there's, you know, the SaaS business, right? There's a lot of different metrics and, and approaches for growing a SaaS company. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's, you know, Saster is a great resource, um, which is, you know, an online community of leaders building SaaS companies. Um, and then there's our, our customers, right? There's the marketing and sales expertise that we're ultimately trying to understand what's happening in the marketplace for sales and marketing leaders. So there's a variety of different places I go online, offline to kind of build my skill sets. Um, yep. Cause I, I do think I, at this stage I have to be, you know, the, the chief product officer, I have to be the chief marketer, the chief sales, right? Chief storyteller. Um, not that I'm great in all those areas, but as, you know, the, as the leader of the company, I have to kind of set that direction. Makes a lot of sense. Very interesting. Uh, just one follow up on the CEO group. If somebody listening would be interested, you know, finding something like this in their own city, like where would you typically find that? Is that sort of, you know, hosted by the city? Is that like, is that a meetup group? How should people imagine that? I mean, there. It, it, I guess it would vary by city. Um, I'm I'm part of a group that's specific to Washington D.C. There are other global organizations like um, YPO, um, which is Young Presidents Organization, which I think is a global. Um, I think you have to be maybe five million in revenue to get into that. Um, but there's a variety of different groups that I you just have reached out to me that I haven't been able to take part of. But it is definitely a new. Um, experience for me having to work with other CEOs that have been that and it's always expanding my thinking in ways that those others you know learning about marketing or sales that sort of thing it just doesn't you know it's, it's a different different learning very cool very cool one last question on that one what was the topic then that you would research had would have researched last last you mentioned you were the head of product head of growth in a way everything together um, what is the topic maybe the last topic that you really try to dive into and, and learn more about yeah I really think it's about setting up the right team for SaaS growth, right? When do you hire, invest in marketing? When do you hire and invest in sales? You know, what revenue thresholds do you make those investments, right? So these are always things I'm trying to get the right people on the team at the right time. And so you can, you can hire the wrong people. I mean, it could be the right resource at the wrong time, right? You could also wait too long to invest into those resources. So something I'm thinking about right now is when do I make the right investments in critical hires for the next stage of growth makes total sense very interesting very cool topic and i'm assuming you found a lot of good stuff at, around saster and stuff yes there was, a lot of, there was a lot of good things written out there that's right very cool last question to finish up the interview um it's been very interesting to learn from your perspective um if you would sort of step back yourself or go back to the uh, to the day when you are um were joining uh nine lenses and took on the ceo head what would be one advice that you would give yourself today to the, you know, to the person that you were back then once you got started? Wow, that's a great question. Um, it's a hard question too. Um, you know, I think I would just try to accelerate my decision making, right? So, you know, as a first time CEO, you know, you may sit on decisions sometimes and um, it'd be easier in hindsight saying, okay, I probably could have made that decision months earlier right um and and i would say that's one thing i've I've, again hear from a lot of different people you know if you think it's the right thing then you should just go ahead and pull the trigger on the decision um you know more time usually doesn't bring more clarity um it may oftentimes even may create its own problems so um whether that's hiring a person or letting a person go or making investments in different things um you know making a, a quick decision in these areas is oftentimes better than no decision very, very, very cool, Tom. Thanks a lot for sort of giving us that insight. So the, today we learned a lot about nine lenses. We learned what product, um, you know, that's been built out. It's a great product to, you know, bring actually a lot of different types of context into an assessment format and, you know, get better qualified leads uh, through that, uh, which is nine lenses actually leveraging themselves. And we learned a lot about how Tom is, you know, educating himself. And one thing that he would do is, do is probably making quicker decisions if you could go back in time. So thanks, Tom, for being part of the show today. You're welcome, Lucas. My pleasure. Very good.